Okay, so once uh, the PVA is dry and you've uh, pressed them flat, uh, you can seal the, the covers if, if you wish. Um, this isn't this is not a necessary step, it's just a possibility. If you're going to be using your book um, in, uh, in a lot of different uh, locations, you're going to put it in your backpack, carry it with you, uh, sealing it can just help protect it and um, make it a little bit easier to wipe off and everything. So what I'm going to do is seal it with uh, just some regular um, acrylic gel and you can create uh, just some brush strokes, uh, it doesn't have to be um, you know, perfectly smooth. I kind of like uh, all of the different brush strokes on the cover. Uh, makes a neat uh, transparent uh, textured feel. Another option actually would be to uh, draw a picture or paint a picture before you seal it. Um, but you, you still can paint, um, add decoration to the surface um, even after you've sealed it. So. It's not uh, like this has to be the very final coat. And I'm sealing the fabric as well. And then you can either uh, dry this uh, just kind of open, or you can uh, cover it in the, uh, the waxed paper again and uh, repress it. If you do just have it dry in the open, you might find that the covers uh, warp a little bit, curl up, uh, but you can actually put them under some books after uh, they are completely dry to uh, repress them flat. Okay, so uh, you know it might take a a day or so to press them back flat, but it's uh, you know works works just fine. And uh, I think that I'll go ahead and press it. It will change the texture of the paint just a little bit or the acrylic gel, um, but I don't mind that either. It makes kind of a cool uh, a cool texture too. Okay, so now we're going to uh, create a template uh, to pierce holes um, in both the pages that are going to be in our sketchbook as well as uh, the covers. Okay, and I've shown you one way to do that in the uh, previous video on the soft cover uh, stab binding. In this one, I'm going to show you a way of measuring. Okay, so uh, my pages are six inches one, two, three, four, five, six. That's my template. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line across here and uh, then I'm going to make, let's see, um, well first I'm going to make marks every inch. Okay, so in doing that, if those are the only holes that I want to punch, I'll end up with a stitch like this. Okay, very elegant, uh, very um, understated, uh, really beautiful, and you can use, uh, this is actually um, kind of a metallic thread, I don't know if you can see the light kind of reflecting on it, but uh, you can use uh, different, um, different uh, threads uh, that are exotic or kind of... Um, Uh, textured in different ways. I'm going to make these larger and for this book I am just going to do uh, kind of an understated uh, template because I you know everything about the book is kind of understated and I just don't want to um, uh, make anything kind of stand out uh, even more. So now what I do oops, I'm going to go this direction is line this up take of just a few pages at a time. Four, I could probably use more than that. Uh, like six pages at a time. Line this up. If you have uh, any kind of uh, paper clips or things like that, it helps to adhere that uh, with uh, some kind of a clamp or a paper clip. And then uh, you always want to remember to draw a, an arrow or a T for the top and then also mark that on your actual paper. Okay, then you're going to take your awl and work it through uh, that stack of paper. And I would actually make the, the whole nice, uh, you know, a fairly large hole. Um, 
because it makes it a whole lot easier to uh, sew. So now uh, with a blunt needle, uh, with a large eye, uh, thread your, uh, your binding thread, okay? And then come in uh, from the back, pull through until you have, you know, a decent, until you have a decent sized uh, length of tail. Um, okay. And then we're going to add these sections one by one. Notice I'm lining up uh, the top with the top of this. Another th nice thing about stab binding is that you don't actually have to wax the thread, okay? You can use a variety of other, of different types of uh, ribbon, thread, all kinds of different things. So cinch that down nice and tight, and then you're going to have to come back up through. Okay, so you have a little tail here. Uh, you've pulled these strings tight, okay? You, you want to make sure that you don't have like loops of uh, string in between the different sections uh, that you've created. Uh, bring the string back around the side, and then go under this string. Okay, so now we have uh, the tail and then we have the string that we're working with. Uh, take the short tail and put it over the long one and then wrap it around. This is an overhand knot. Pull it tight. Now take the short string again, wrap it or put it in front of the long uh, tail and wrap it around another overhand knot. These are overhand knots that are being tied in the opposite direction. Okay, so you use the same uh, tail, but it is on the opposite side. Okay, and now we're going to take this string and go into the next hole. Okay. Go through each section, find the piercing in the next, so pull that tight, and then wrap it around and go through again. And the second time you go through, it should be easier uh, simply because you've already lined up all the pages. Okay, that's why you really want to pull it tight. If you have trouble pulling the needle through, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers, uh, which really helps. Okay, then wrap that around the tail. You're going to go back through. Uh, once again, this should not be too difficult because all of the pages and uh, the different piercings are lined up. If you have trouble it's probably because it shifted just a little bit so you can retighten it then cinch that down good and tight. Okay now we're just going to go back Okay, now we can either tie this here, which I think I will probably do just because I'm running out of thread, um, or you can actually take your needle and go through this one more time and uh, tie it all on one side. Okay, so to tie this, 
Um, we're going to go under both of these. And then we're going to tie two overhand knots, okay? So we're making this, it looks kind of like a little uh, four. We're taking this loop, crossing over that one, and coming up from under. Okay, now we're crossing over from the other side, going under and over. Okay, um, then you can either uh, take the needle and go back through this and then trim uh, the end so that it uh, is flush with the other side, or you can just trim a little tail just like on the other side so that they kind of uh, match. So then you have a uh, little sketchbook that can open and you know you can use it in different ways. Uh, it uses that hinge on the cover and if this is still a little bit damp uh, you can go ahead and press it some more and that will uh, help it to uh, lie flat and firm.